I love my PS4 controller, but the micro B port that was originally put on these controllers was an engineering mistake that should have never been invented. And today I'm going to be fixing that with a simple drop in kit from Europe. For about 15 bucks and 15 minutes of your time, you will never have to deal with the micro B port again. No more loose cables, no more cables that don't connect, and no more buying a new controller simply because you can't even charge the one that you own. And today I'm going to be guiding you through the process. There is a disclaimer that I'm going to include now. In order to know what kind of USB-C board you need to buy, you need to know what model controller you have. I believe most controllers m you might be able to find out based off their serial number. But because, as I showed, I'm using a Scuf Impact controller, I had to physically open mine up and look on the motherboard. If you don't know how to do that, this guide will show you how to get the back off. And from there, you can follow the iFixit guide online to completely disassemble your controller. But once you find the gold number on the motherboard, just buy the corresponding board from the site and you will be perfectly fine. So first, obviously, you need your controller and a proper size screwdriver. And of course, you need to go down and like the video and subscribe right now if you haven't already. That is also necessary for this disassembly. Simply flip the controller over and there are four screws that you need to unscrew. Again, this is a scuff controller, but any regular PS4 controller should come apart the exact same. Now, after your controller is unscrewed, I'm going to warn you now to not just pop the back off because you might break the ribbon cable inside. However, you are going to need something plastic to help pry the two sides apart. Maybe even something like a credit card will work, but don't use anything metal or you might scuff and mar up the plastic all around your controller and you don't want to do that. And until you've taken apart the controller once or twice, try not to use your hands too much because you will snap the clips that connect the top and the bottom. Just kind of work your way around the controller shell until you hear enough pops and then eventually you can sort of slowly get the two sides to come apart. Now. Once the two sides of the controller are separated, be very careful and separate them until you can see the ribbon cable inside and pull it out of the main board of the controller. Now, my controller has a couple extra wires and ribbon cables that connect the front and the back case together, but yours shouldn't. These are just specific to my controller because they connect the back paddles to the main board. Now that you have the front and the back separated, you want to completely disregard the top half because it does not matter for this board install. However, if you still need to find out what controller model you have to order the right USB-C board, I will link the iFixit teardown in the description below. The hard part of separating the two pieces of the controller has already been done and you haven't broken the ribbon cable, so you're fine. Now, there are two screws you need to remove from this plastics piece holding the front light diffuser in. And that will allow you to access the charging board and the other side of the ribbon cable. All you have to do is take the plastic out, unscrew this one singular screw holding the board in, and you're halfway done. Now, for reference, this is what the USB-C board looks like, and it's beautiful, it's black and gold, and it looks really, really good. But, as you can see here, it doesn't just simply slot in. And this is where things start to get a little frustrating, and your controller might be a little different than mine. For me, I use various tools, including a little tiny file I had on hand, a pocket knife. And remember, be very, very careful when using anything sharp, and do not cut towards yourself, because you will cut yourself and mar your controller up if you're not careful. See, in order to get this to fit, you really need to focus on two different things. For my controller, the most important thing was removing plastic around the USB micro B port in order to allow the USB-C port to fit in. You also might have to remove some plastic around and below where the board goes in case it still doesn't fit. In that case, just use a little bit of elbow grease and you can use a flat head screwdriver to scrape away excess plastic, which I will put on screen from the original guide here. But after a couple minutes of trying, it finally slots back in. And all I have to do is put one singular screw in and you're basically done. I also took this little piece of black tape from the original board, which keeps light from coming out of the charging port area and put it back on. If you lost this or don't have it at all, it really doesn't matter, but if you want to, you could use some electrical tape to cover up the contacts again. I also repaired my rumble motor while I was in there, because earlier when I had opened the controller to find out what board I needed, I severed one of the connection to the rumble motors. Even though I don't use them, I still wanted to have the option to use them, so all it took was a little bit of solder and a couple minutes of time. But be very careful when opening your controller, because this is something that can happen to anybody. And I can't tell you how many times I've opened a controller, PS4, PS5, and Xbox alike, and ripped off the rumble motor cords. And yeah, that's about it. It's really that simple, and it works like a charm. And again, this won't apply to anybody except for people using the Scuf Impact controller like me, but as you can see here, I had to whittle down the thing that's around the charging port here. Because for some reason from the factory, Scuf decided that you should only be able to use their cables or cables that are small enough to fit inside of it. But after a couple minutes of whittling it down with a knife, and I actually used a toenail clipper too because that actually helped get at some of the plastic that I couldn't get without scraping the controller up, I was able to plug in any USB-C cable that I want. But now I have a fully functional USB-C 
PS4 controller, meaning that one cable can now power just about every single device I have. And I tested this on PC and PS5, so it works just as a normal PS4 controller. There's nothing changed about and again, it. Again, for only a couple minutes of your time, this $15 board completely revitalizes the PS4 controller in 2024 and gives you an actual reason to use it and the ability to use it. Of course, stick drift is an issue and there are other solutions for that, but the main problem with the PS4 generation of controllers is the charging port and the cables associated with it. And as you can see, it's not just factory PS4 controllers. You can do this in custom high-end controllers if you'd like. And of course, I'll have the link down in the description for you to buy one. It is not an affiliate link. And I think that's it for today. If you would, please leave a like on the video and comment if you have any questions or concerns. I will do my absolute best to respond to you. If you haven't already, please remember to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell to be notified whenever I come out with a new upload. Thank you for watching.